I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Today I'm going to talk about two summer appropriate limited edition releases from Clive Christian. Stay tuned to FM. Clive Christian are a company devoted to British tradition, history, culture and luxury and they began in 1978 actually creating furniture and then they bought the Crown Perfumery in 1999 which became Clive Christian Perfumes. So it does kind of make you think about how we categorise niche and designer. So most of the time we will say niche is when a company creates only fragrances, exclusively fragrances and has never created anything else and that's not strictly the case with Clive Christian because they created and still create high-end luxury furniture. I mean there's no clear-cut answer to this, there's no black and white but certainly Clive Christian are what most people would associate with a niche fragrance in their pricing and the high quality luxury ingredients that they use in their fragrances. So two of their original fragrances are 1872 and X. These have become iconic fragrances and they've released two limited editions that are inspired by these two fragrances. So we have 1872 Mandarin and X Neroli. So I'm going to be looking at these two fragrances in this video. Let's get started. The first one I'm going to talk about is X Neroli. This is classified as a floral sheepra. Let's take a look at the notes. So there are apparently 192 ingredients in here. I won't be reading all of those because the only ones I could find are neroli, tuberose, pettigrain, musks, cashmere, vetiver and moss. So to me, Ex Neroli opens up with this bitter green accord. It's very green actually, very fresh, very green. Uh, and there's some underlying florals. Obviously we've got the neroli and the tuberose in here. But it's not sweet and spicy in the same way that X is. I think X is an absolutely stunning fragrance. I really enjoy this. This really just zings off the skin with that sweet spiciness. This doesn't have that. This is very much a bitter green opening. And anything that has neroli in the name of the fragrance, you instantly start to think of other famous Neroli fragrances. Perhaps the most famous of all is Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. To me, it doesn't really bear much similarity to that fragrance. I get more of a soapy uh, Neroli accord from Neroli Portofino, as I do with Aqua de Palma's Colonia Ascensa. So I can link the Neroli accord between those two fragrances, but this, it doesn't smell the same to me. It doesn't have that kind of very distinct Neroli characteristic. I think this green bitterness is maybe coming from the pettigrain in here which gives it this bitter clean green smell and also I do want to mention the tuberose in here so whenever I've smelled tuberose heavy fragrances I get this piercing sweetness almost like this bubblegum type accord but again I don't get that type of tuberose in here I don't get that sweetness I guess there are different ways to utilize things like neroli and tuberose and they are executed in a different way to, to what I would have expected looking at the note breakdown. So it opens with this bitter clean green accord which traditionally isn't something that I gravitate towards. I prefer slightly sweeter scents, uh, scents that are perhaps a, a little heavier uh, with a, a little more weight but it does smell high quality. As it dries down and becomes more of a skin scent though the sweetness does come through more and you get these warming woods and musks and you know the cashmere just seems to smooth things out in the base of this fragrance and I feel like I get some vanilla in there as well. I feel like I get this kind of warming sweet vanilla record. Vanilla isn't listed but it does smell quite vanilla to me in the dry down. So it opens up very fresh, very clean and green, fuses into these white florals and then dries dries down into this warm woody musky scent. I would describe it as 100% unisex. I don't think it leans masculine or feminine. It's straight down the middle. I think you would want to be probably around 30 or over to carry this one off. It's not a sweet youthful fragrance. It definitely has a maturity to it. It's quite a grown up fragrance I think and quite versatile actually. I think this would work beautifully in the summer. I think that green clean quality would just sing so well in the warm weather but I think it's versatile enough to wear all year round. I think it would work great as a work based scent if you're working 
indoors perhaps. Performance for me is a little bit of an issue with this one because I got around an hour of projection on it and this hour of initial projection was the green bitterness which is the accord that isn't something I would normally go for and then as it dries down into the kind of warmer sweeter skin scent it is just that it's a skin scent so it's not really projecting at that stage. I think the projection you're getting for an hour is going to be maybe um, half an arm's length it is projecting but I don't think it's projecting massively and then as it dries down it's a skin scent and you know unless you smell your skin I don't think anyone around you is really going to pick up on the warming sweeter side of the dry down. The price of this is in line with the rest of Clive Christian's pricing so you will be paying £285 for 50ml so it's a very expensive fragrance. I think it depends on where you're at in terms of uh, your finances and what type of fragrances you enjoy as to whether you think that offers value. I think there are many people out there that will enjoy wearing a Clive Christian fragrance, buying into the prestige of that house and recognising the fact that it is a very well blended, very well put together scent. Uh, personally for me, my jaw has to literally be on the floor to, to spend that much money. So just because it's not a fragrance that I really would wear, I personally wouldn't spend that much money but if you enjoy classy refined really well put together fragrances that have that green bitterness and are massive in terms of their performance then this one might very well be worth trying. Join the Scent Geeks every Monday as we podcast about all things fragrance. You'll find us anywhere you can usually find a podcast. Links are in the description below this video. See you there geeks. Moving on to 1872 Mandarin, let's have a look at the presentation of the bottle and I'll let you know what the notes are. So again, many, many ingredients in this fragrance, but the prominent notes that I could find are Mandarin, Green Accords, Juniper and Violet. So again, this one opens quite green and bitter. You definitely get the mandarin orange here, but it's more of an unripened mandarin orange, uh, which is where this kind of green bitterness comes from. Uh, kind of like, uh, like an orange rind, actually, rather than a, a sweet, fully ripened, juicy orange. So it's quite prominent. This, this bitter mandarin really does cut through the air. It has great lift and projection, much better projection, actually, than X Neroli. And then as it dries down, we get into this kind of uh, sweeter, powdery violet accord in the heart and as it dries down it becomes sweeter and gets a touch creamier which is a really lovely development with this fragrance because it starts out quite sharp and bitter and then it just becomes this sweeter more rounded fragrance so I, I really enjoy that about this. The mandarin certainly though is the most prominent note throughout the whole life of the fragrance it just almost as if the mandarin orange is ripening throughout the time that you're wearing this fragrance so it is really enjoyable. Uh, it's quite a clean and simple smell even though there's 149 ingredients in here it is not complex it's not a busy fragrance there aren't lots of notes competing for one another and that is really pleasant actually that is one thing I really do enjoy about this fragrance you know what you're getting it's a clean simple uncomplicated scent that really does the job it sets out to do I think this is a very classy, very enjoyable and sophisticated summer scent. Again, I would say this is definitely 100% unisex and I think you'd want to be maybe around 25 plus. Obviously, that's just a rough uh, guidance. Maybe if you're younger, you would enjoy wearing this fragrance. But personally, I, I feel that it does lean a little older. It doesn't quite have that sweetness we might associate with younger scents. But if you are younger and you're not into those sweeter scents, this may very well be for you. Very versatile again. I think you could wear this all year round. I think it would work in the cooler months, but it definitely excels in the warmth. This really refreshing uh, mandarin note really um, cuts through that warm air perfectly and it's quite invigorating, actually. Let's talk about the performance. For a, a bright, fresh scent, I'm really pleased with the performance of this. I get around two to three hours projection. This mandarin just seems to zing off the skin for most of the life. And that life of the fragrance is gonna give you around eight to 10 hours. So um, for a scent that works so well in the summer, absolutely no complaints about the performance of this one. The price again is the same, it's £285 for 50ml and it is still expensive 
for me personally, that is very expensive, but I do really enjoy this scent. I'm not gonna go out there and say, yes, I would definitely buy this at that price. I would maybe look for someone selling a partial bottle, but I do have to say, I really enjoy it for a summer scent. I would have to sit down and give it some serious consideration. So definitely Ex Neroli, I think I wouldn't go for, but I would definitely be thinking quite a lot about whether to pull the trigger uh, at full retail on this one. If you like the idea of a clean, fresh, fruity, very classy, very high quality summer fragrance, then I can highly recommend 1872 Mandarin. And I should just say, Clive Christian did send me both these fragrance samples, so thank you to them. But I've tried to be as honest as possible as I always am in these videos. All right, so I'm gonna bring this to a close here. I hope you enjoyed my take on these fragrances. I did post uh, an Instagram picture of them and quite a few people were saying, yeah, I'm really interested in these, so I'd love to hear more about them. So if you've watched this video, I hope it's been useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have tried these fragrances, let me know. I would love to hear your opinions on them. All right, I'm out. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good.